You know, niggas gotta get their priorities together. Got their mind on the wrong thing, spending their money in the wrong way. Trap Real trap shit. Say so you need that car with the rim for what? And a charm just like Jim. It's more than life. Yeah. I'm telling you. Say you need that LV bag for what? With the belt up and the hat. It's more than life. Yeah. Talk to Real trap shit. Say you wanna turn up at the club. Some bottles and press them guns. It's right for the line. Oh, yeah. fucking everybody. Yeah. <laughs> no, Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Saints and Appetizers podcast. And who that? And it's been a while. Uh, you know, I, all those listeners out there that are sticking with me, uh, I appreciate it because I'm. I know because it's the off season now. I'm not not staying quite as consistent. Uh, with, with the podcast, but uh, we're, we're here now, and uh, we want, want to talk about um, the NFL honors, some of the Hall of Fame uh, nonsense, honestly, because our boy Gerard Evans didn't get in, and then uh, kind of t- maybe recap this this uh, Super Bowl that was kind of, I don't know, lackluster, uh, but uh, yeah, so I just mentioned, like, yeah, I'm not as on here quite as consistently uh, as I'd like, or maybe some people out there would like, but, uh, you know, uh, we, we got a good beard going now. Uh, I think most people that followed, uh, the, this, uh, this podcast through, through the regular season, I, I mostly just had a, a mustache and, 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 uh, and a mullet going, but now, now we got a pretty, pretty serious beard. This is something that kind of grew last year, but yeah, that, that, that's just, uh, for my appearance, my looks, uh, a little little different than the mustache that I had most of the year but anyways uh let, let's let's get into some of this uh some of some of these uh play the NFL honors and Hall of Fame stuff well let's let's get into that because that you know besides that there hadn't really been a lot of Saints news which is probably a good thing uh no no news is good news usually for the Saints in the off season because it's usually uh some player getting injured playing basketball or getting a DUI or something like that. So no news is good news so far. Uh, so uh, let, let's get in this. So can I get a menu? And so first is the NFL honors. And I just wanted to kind of go over the the picks and the, the, the I guess, the people that won those, the, the honors winners there. Uh, so just go through each one and kind of give them my thoughts, I think. So the MVP is uh, Lamar Jackson. It seemed like for weeks there, a lot of people knew that he was going to be the MVP, even though uh, just going off stats, he didn't really have like amazing stats, you know, uh, and just not not even a, not even a lot of touchdowns or anything like his yards rushing. And I think he only threw for like thirty eight hundred yards. And he's like the first quarterback uh, in, a, in a long time to win the MVP and throw for less than 30 touchdowns. Uh, and and then I, I know it's a regular season award, but then he looks very lackluster in the preseason and, and not the preseason, but the playoff games that he played in, in both of them, honestly. And, and even obviously the in AFC championship game, you know, one game away from the Super Bowl and just put up a complete dud. But honestly, if I, I my pick for this, even though I know it kind of goes off of how good a season you have, usually a player from the best team. And it is you is usually the player that ends up winning uh, the MVP. But I, I would have given it to to uh, to Jared. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, what the heck? Is his name? Uh, Josh Allen. Josh Allen is who I would have given it to because he had like he had four, 40 total touchdowns because he had like what, like 30 rushing touchdowns and like 10 or no, 30 passing touchdowns and like 10. 10 rushing touchdowns. So he his numbers were just more impressive, you know, and he threw for like 4,800 yards. Uh, I think the only thing that really knock against him is that he threw, threw a, a, I think he led the league in interceptions. So, you know, uh, you get docked pretty, pretty bad for that. And they just ne- never looked, 
uh, as good as they have in previous years. So I guess that's what her. But I, I, I would have probably went with Josh Allen. But like, like I said, they they pick the best player from the best team usually. All right. Um, so then it's a comeback player of the year, and I have like really no arguments with uh, Joe Flacco winning this. Uh, just because it's it, the story, you know, of how he didn't even really play last year, and then he comes in and and he continues to lead the 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 Cleveland Browns to the playoffs because they they had a decent record before uh, uh, before uh, Watson, Sean Watson went down. But I, I'm glad to to see that Joe Flacco and a player that actually played uh, won the comeback player of the year. Not not a not a guy. Uh, like Demar Hamlin, I know he came back literally from death, but he he only played like a handful of snaps, like on special teams this year. So I don't really look at that as a a comeback. You, you can, I guess you can, I guess you can call this a comeback, but I I don't look at it that way. And then uh, defensive player of the year uh, was Miles Garrett, and that's a, that's another one that I don't really have much arguments about because uh, I think a lot of people out there. Thought T.J. Watt should maybe win it, but and I and just mentioned like I know that these are uh, regular season awards, you know, but he he was kind of lackluster in his last couple games of the season, and then what he got hurt early on in like their last game of the season, and then didn't play, you know, he didn't contribute or play or help help them uh, when they needed to needed needed him room for for. Uh, needed him for the playoff game he wasn't available so that that's just kind of he had a great season but it didn't it just kind of ended lackluster so I wouldn't have given it to uh to TJ Watt and he couldn't couldn't really give it to Max Crosby because he's on a losing team uh but yeah I, I don't have much of an argument with Miles Garrett Garrett getting it and he's kind of a superstar face of the NFL anyway so it's not really surprised that he won it over those, over like T.J. Watt and Max Crosby. And then Offensive Player of the Year is Christian McCaffrey. And honestly, uh, if I'm not going with Josh Allen to be the MVP, uh, I, I would have gone with Kurt Christian McCaffrey to win both MVP and Offensive Player of the Year. But we, we I think we all, all out there, we, we realize that the MVP is just a, the quarterback award now, you know, uh, Basically, uh, offensive player of the year just goes up to goes to any other position uh, runner up. Basically, that's all you are. It's a consolation prize, basically, uh, for actually possibly being the best player in the league, the most valuable player in the league. Uh, and then uh, on to offensive rookie of the year, uh, C.J. Stroud, which I mean, we got as Saints fans and Hoodats, we got to see it firsthand of how, how good he could be. Uh, just sad that Zach Bond got the first interception of his career off of him and fumbled it right back to him. Uh, even, even you know, uh, can't can't hate on Zach Bond too much because he, he had a strong showing at the end of the year. But uh, I can't really argue with C.J. Stroud. He had some of the best numbers and, like, the highest quarterback rating of, like, a rookie, uh, like, of all time and le leading the, the Houston Texans going from the worst team in the league to – a playoff team went went in their division is pretty impressive. That's a pretty uh, impressive uh, feat for for a rookie quarterback. I mean, the only other person you could maybe argue could win this is a uh, uh, Puka Nakua uh, because he he had an amazing season. You know, had like thirteen hundred yards receiving, almost a hundred catches, and like double digit touchdowns. Uh, so I would have been fine with it going to either one of those players. And then uh, defensive rookie of the year. This is this is probably the only one uh, where the Saints may have had a chance to to win this award because uh, because uh, Brian Brice was pretty good. Like Will Anderson uh, Jr.'s uh, numbers weren't like amazing compared to compared to uh, Brian Brice. Like he, if you're just kind of going off of sacks and tackles for loss and things like uh, stats stats like that. See if I can find it. Let's see, okay. So, and he and he was like the third pick in in overall in the draft, and uh, so that that helps him probably win it over Brian Bersi, and then he's on a, a playoff team as well, so that probably helps him on top of 
uh, top of all that. Uh, but he he played in 15 games with 13 starts and had a pass deflection and seven sacks uh, and let's see, 10 tackles for loss and 22 quarterback hits. So those are impressive uh, numbers for a rookie defensive end. Sometimes it takes a little while for a for a uh, defensive lineman to to uh, to to mature, you know, to play play up to their uh, ability like that. And find Brian. Yeah, I'm trying to find Brian. See, there he is. Just want to kind of compare the numbers a little bit. I guess I guess they're quite a bit better, but you got to realize they play different positions. You know, he's a edge rusher. Will Anderson Jr. is an edge rusher and a defensive uh, tackle. Uh, Brian Brissy is a defensive tackle. So you got got to realize you got to uh, realize that the that that the stats are a little bit different because they play different positions, but still very impressive uh, from from uh, Brian Brissy. He played in 17 games, but didn't didn't start any of them like like Will Anderson Jr. So that probably accounts for some of the numbers uh, there. And then he had four and a half four and a half sacks and uh, seven tackles for loss and nine quarterback hits. Uh, yeah, nine quarterback hits. So uh, you know, compar comparable. Uh, just different positions, you know, uh, and and he didn't start any games either. Uh, but that that's probably about the only uh, award honor that any Saints player really came close to winning. At least in my my opinion, I don't I don't know I don't know I doubt I doubt he got even any votes. I don't I don't think I don't think he got any actual votes. But just just picking a player that I think was maybe kind of close to putting up good enough numbers to get kind of recognized. And I'm, I'm excited uh, to see what Brian Brissy uh, looks, looks like. And ho hopefully he's a full-time starter and he continue, continue, can continue to stay healthy. I think that probably kind of helped him uh, last year staying healthy because he was just on a snap count and kind of just a rotational defensive tackle. But so those are the NFL honors. That's kind of my thoughts about them. Don't, don't have too much of a gripe with any of them. Uh, I can I can definitely see that those are pretty respectable um, respectable uh, honors, and I'm skipping over one here. I'm missing Coach of the Year, which is Kevin Stefanski, uh, and that uh, he, he so that's two Browns, that's three Browns players that have, that won an award. Joe Flacco, Miles Garrett, Kevin Stefanski. They should have just given it all to the Browns, uh, but but. For coach of the year, I mean, I don't know how they couldn't have given it to Dan Campbell. I mean, taking the Lions uh, to win the division for the first time in like 30 years and then win a playoff game with just as long a time and make the NFC cha championship for like the first time in franchise history. I, I don't know how you couldn't have given it to Dan Campbell. So that kind of tells you well, the big, the larger markets uh, win these awards. You know, it is the, kind of a popularity contest. And I could see where Dan Campbell maybe kind of rubs people wrong, but yeah, you got Joe Flacco, Miles Garrett, uh, Kevin Kevin Svancy. They say it's the NFL honors, more like the Cleveland Brown honors. Uh, all right, so that's enough of that. I tried tried to cover them all and I'm almost skipped over, them, but I, I think I think we got them now. But you know, it's about a third of them I kind of disagree with, them, but the majority I, I agree with. All right, on to the Hall of Fame. And this is what has me a little, little fired up, you know. But it's hard to argue with some of these picks on here, you know. Uh, I'm, uh, and why I say I'm a little fired up and a little upset is, is because Jarrar Evans didn't get in uh, again, uh, a four, four in a time in a row. Four made he made four straight All Pros, uh, six, six, a six-time Pro Bowler, won, won a Super Bowl. I, I just don't know what more you have to do uh, to get in. Uh, and I, I honestly thought he was maybe going to be a, a first teamer. I, I mean, his numbers are, are good, but I, I guess the position of offensive lineman and guard and center just aren't really very exciting, uh, exciting positions, you know, to get in. But I just, I really hope he gets in next year because it's just going to be a little, a little annoying. You know, he just continue to get pushed down and pushed down the list when you don't don't get in your first or your second time so uh let, let but let, let's go over who got in over him kind of you know i don't it's hard, hard to argue really 
So uh, Dwight Freeney, uh, obviously, is one of the best pass rushers of my, my generation, you know, um, had, what, like 150-something sacks at, at the end of his career. Maybe it was like 130. Let's see. But not not surprised uh, that that he gets in o- over over Dry Evans. Not a, not a real surprise. One front one of the best players in Indianapolis Colts history. You know he's an all, all decade two thousand teams uh, had yeah one hundred and twenty five sacks in his career. Uh, but because he gets in, I, my question. Is I wonder if Robert Mathis gets in because he had like just just as good a number, maybe even had more sacks and pl- played longer than him. So it'd be interesting if if uh, Robert Mathis uh, is ever considered uh, to be a Pro Bowler. But yeah, I can't can't argue with Dwight Freeney. the The main thing that I remember about Dwight Freeney anytime I think about him is how that was like all they talked about uh, during the Super Bowl week, the two weeks leading up to the Super Bowl when the Saints uh, played the Colts and won, won, won the Super Bowl, is they that's all they talked about was Dwight Freeney's ankle, uh, hurt ankle. They were just wondering, oh, they, they're just monitoring uh, Dwight Freeney's ankle. Like They didn't talk about anything else. And he ended up not being a factor, so may, maybe his uh, ankle injury was as serious, serious as people were billing it up to be. But, yeah, that's the, that's really the only thing I think about. When, when I see Dwight Freeney's name or someone says it, it's just Dwight Freeney's ankle. Uh, but, yeah, he ended up not being a factor in that game. The Saints won. So, uh, who dad to that. All right. And then uh, another player, second player on that list, not that these are in any kind of order specifically uh, of better player or not, but just on this list that I have here. Uh, Devin Hester, you know, uh, I, I don't have that, – that's about the only player – that I could maybe see would get in over uh, Gerard Evans because there's a, a weird uh, con- concession, you know, kind of a, a divide of people that don't think that uh, a return man should even get in the NFL because he doesn't get put up a lot of touchdowns. He he was a lackluster as a wide receiver. And some people are even trying to say, like, kick and punt return is not an actual position, which I, I just kind of disagree with that. And I, I will – me honestly, I, I was surprised that he didn't get in as a a, fir- a, a, a first time all famer, you know. Uh, like I, I'm surprised he didn't didn't get in on on the first try uh, because it, it, you can't really argue just the the numbers and the kind of stuff that he did throughout his career. It's pretty kind of ha- hands down um, the the best return man of all time and you know he played in the Super Bowl didn't win but you know that's one of the most iconic moments of definitely my generation was the the, the kick return the kickoff return for a touchdown uh so that you know first time Hall of Famer uh didn't get in for that but I would say uh comparably and I, I would kind of see uh Gerard Evans maybe could have beat out him and then uh, on the list next uh, is Julius Peppers. And as Saints fan, we all know how great Julius Peppers uh, was. And, you know, the only thing he's kind of lacked luster in, I guess he doesn't never played in a Super Bowl or anything like that. But he, he played for a long time, and he definitely lived up to his status of a high-round draft pick, you know, because a lot of times those players, you know, they get billed up to being so great, and then they end up being bust. Uh, but not, but not Julius Peppers. So can't really argue with Julius Peppers. And then uh, Patrick Willis can't can't argue with that either. I mean, uh, I just I, I want Drawer Evans to get in. Uh, but th- things there, it's just not looking great for him. You know, the all, only argument with Patrick Willis is that he didn't play a long time. He played only like what eight, ten seasons or something, and he had to retire because of he had turf toe, a t- toe injury. So can't can't argue with that. At all, I just want my want my guy. We want we want our guy to get in. You know the the disrespect of the Saints just need, need it to end. And then these other two are just their senior inductions, so uh, that didn't matter who who they were, but because they're players that played like thirty plus years ago, uh, they they just they're just 
inducted as, as I guess there's always two senior inductees of players that played a long time ago and ne never got the recognition or consideration that they can get now. But Randy, uh, Randy Gradshar and uh, Stephen McMichael, Stephen Michael, he was like a defensive tackle or defensive end for the Chicago Bears, you know, the 85 Bears. Uh, so can't can't say much about that, but uh, let's let's move on uh, to the 2025 candidates, which I believe will make it just as hard for Drari Evans to get in like he got in, like he didn't get in this year of the 2024. So Eli Manning, I mean, a lot of people want to say Eli Manning uh, isn't, isn't a pro, isn't a Hall of Famer, but I disagree with that. Maybe he's not a a, a first time Hall of Famer, uh, but uh, he's definitely a Hall of Famer. And I mean, he has played in two of the most iconic games in NFL history: the the, the two Super Bowl wins over the Patriots and Tom Brady. So I mean that 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 alone, and just being a, a quarterback, a starting quarterback of a team with that won two Super Bowls, that 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 alone gets you in. And then Luke Kuechly, he he's basically the same story kind of as Patrick Willis, a uh, guy that uh, was elite, best linebacker in the league when he played, but then he had to retire early because he, he it wasn't because of toe injuries, but it was kind of from concussions. So I could see him just getting in just because of uh, his status of being such a great player when he played. And then Adam Vinatieri, I mean, he single-handedly won like two of the first three Super Bowls, or maybe all three of them, he kicked like a game-winning kick or a game-tying kick uh, to get them to help them win those games. So I mean, uh, I don't think I don't think a kicker has been inducted in in a while. I don't know if a kicker has been inducted uh, to the Hall of Fame since like uh, Mortensen, uh, who who played played well, a good while uh, for for the Saints and, and the Falcons. So you could say he's a Saints Hall of Famer. Uh, Mortensen, uh, the kicker, and he just played forever. He played for like 20 plus years. Uh, so that, that the longevity uh, stat kind of gets some of these players in. And then Terrell Suggs, I mean, I don't look at Terrell Suggs as as good as Julius Peppers or as good as Dwight Freeney. He played uh, just as long as some of those guys and put up similar numbers, but I, I never looked at Terrell Suggs as like uh, – like that's a player that you need to highlight and and watch out for him. You know, I was always on those teams. I was more always more concerned of like Ray Lewis and Ed the Ball Hawk, uh, Ed Reed, and then Marshall Yonda. I mean, that'll really annoy me if uh, a guard that basically has basically the same stats, but is a come retired I guess a year after Jarari Evans, like a guard Marshall Yonda. But a lot, a lot of people are uh, pretty uh, steadfast that he he's a Hall of Famer and a, a first time team, a first time Hall of Famer. And then uh, Marshawn Lynch, I mean, he he was great, and and if he gets in, I think that'll definitely be just because of uh, uh, popularity. Like he put up numbers. I realized he rushed uh, for like ten thousand plus yards and scored a lot of touchdowns, but I never really looked at while Marshawn Lynch was in the league, you know, and in his prime, I never looked at him as like the best running back in the league. And that, that probably sounds like blasphemy coming from a Saints fan. And after the beast quake and every time I see or hear anything about that, I just want to throw up. And then uh, we have, uh, but anyways, Earl Thomas, I, I, he put up the great numbers and he was held in such high regard when he played. He, he, you, you'd have thought when he still played for the Seahawks that he was like going to be like a, a hands down Hall of Famer. But then things just kind of fell apart when he became a Raider and he had some kind of weird domestic dispute or something with one of his buddies with his wife or something weird. Uh, I, I still am not understanding that. And so he just kind of got booted out of the league uh, for odd reasons which that that alone could keep him out and then uh, Joel Staley that's another offensive lineman similar to Drari Evans I, like I said be annoyed if he got in uh, over uh, over uh, over Drari Evans 
and then Demaria, uh, Demarius Thomas. I, I could I could almost see like I I don't like saying this because it's kind of disrespectful a little bit, but I could almost see him getting in uh, kind of as as a, a sympathy vote a little bit because he because he died he died uh, December eighth, twenty twenty one, but and he was a great receiver and he won a Super Bowl with the Denver Broncos. So I, I but I think I think the sympathy vote. Uh, because he's a young young man that's dead, I, I could see that. And then you got Aqib Talib, no. Vernon Davis, no. Uh, Darren Sproles, you know he was great for the Saints, but he never. And he had like the one season where he was had the all broke the all purpose record, and I think I think he may still have the record for that with return yards, uh, uh, rushing yards, and receiving yards, like total yards. Uh, but I, I don't see Darren Sproles as really a, a pro, a pro bowler, even though he had some great years, but he never, he never rushed for a thousand yards or had a thousand yards receiving or anything like that. So if you're just looking at him, uh, as his position of running back, he was never a, a, like a great running back, you know, like one of the best in the league, uh, what he was maybe best for and made, made it, made a pro bowl for is being a kick returner, but a kick, a punt returner. But like we were just saying, with Devin Hester, some people don't list that as an actual position. And then we have uh, Cameron Wake, who has uh, the last player of the 20, 25 candidates that are going to make it hard for Jarari Evans to get in is uh, Cameron Wake. And I kind of look at him similar to Terrell Suggs. You know, he's a great player. And the thing with him is he played till like he was like 40, which was impressive. But he had 100 plus sacks, but, you know, playing with the Dolphins a uh, good portion of his career, you know, he kind of, kind of, especially back then, you know, the early 2000, the 2000s, early 2000s, uh, you kind of, kind of get uh, swept, swept under the rug a little bit when you're playing for the, play, playing for the Dolphins back then. But so that, that, that's kind of sums up the Hall of Fame. Uh, I want Gerard Evans to get in. I honestly thought the, the first, first, first ballot, he'd have been a first, I honestly thought he was going to be a first ballot and then him not getting in. Uh, the second time when he was a finalist, and then looking at that 2025 candidates, I just feel it's going to be hard, hard to get in. But but that's enough of the NFL honors and 2025 candidates. Uh, I, just, I just want my boy uh, Dry Evans to get in. Uh, but let, let's let's go on to now. Now the season's over, Super Bowl's over, and uh, the Clint Kubiak uh, hire is is like official. We we were concerned we didn't. We, we we didn't want him fall, uh, pulling out at the last second like Cliff Kingsbury did the Raiders for their offensive coordinator job. I, I, I just wasn't – I wasn't completely – until the, the, the ink to paper, I wasn't the, o overly confident. You know, I wasn't I – wasn't, I wasn't celebrating yet uh, about the Clint Kubiak hire until he was actually hired. But he's hired now, and I think this, this is be something that's kind of expected – uh, we have uh, quite a few assistant uh, coaches leaving. So we have Doug Marone, who was the offensive line coach for the Saints last year and the pre the previous season. So I, I don't know if I look at that as a big loss. I mean, uh, for the progression and the growth of Trevor Penning, uh, I think you could put uh, some of that on Doug Marone and maybe just how the offensive line couldn't, Co, co the, there was no real cohesion until like later in the season, and you had uh, Andres Pete at left tackle. But I, I just just early in the season, I, I think I think uh, Doug Marone kind of failed us, and I think he he felt he failed uh, he he failed Trevor Penning uh, too in his growth, I believe. But then but then you have uh, let's see, there's a couple more. Um, D, DJ Williams is assistant coach. Uh, I didn't really know much about him until he until he left. Uh, so I don't know how big of a loss that is. I know he's a young up and coming coach, but I, you know, I just, I, I realize why these uh, firings and coaches moving on, going to other places for like promotions is because Clint Kubiak, he's going to bring in all his guys. And then the only, only real one that I'm a little upset about, maybe worried about a little bit, I uh, wish we could have retained was uh, Ronald Curry, the wide receivers coach uh, for the Saints. 
uh, and they, they actually interviewed him for the head coaching spot. Uh, but I, I'm kind of I'm kind of glad uh, that 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 he didn't uh, get the offensive coordinator job. I think I said head coaching job, but offensive coordinator jobs because I think I think the Saints they need a new vo- voice uh, in the locker room. They need a, a new voice of authority and uh, just having the same guy that's been on the team with how they have kind of uh, got a little. Uh, rowdy you know they're not not as disciplined as they have been I mean they're not going to change uh, for a guy that's been there already I think uh, new new voice and authority uh, w- could be really helpful uh, for this team which is kind of why I probably see uh, no Michael Thomas back next year and maybe Jameis Winston getting cut so uh, yeah it's just now it's just kind of Clint Kubiak uh out with the old, in with the new, and he's going to just bring in all his assistants, offensive coordinators, and his wide receivers coach, which I, I'm here for it. Uh, there's nothing nothing really from those players, uh, from those coaches that was overly impressive last year, besides maybe Ronald Curry. Uh, but really, I don't see those as two big of key losses, but I, I guess we won't know until, until next season. Uh, so now I'll just uh, move it and just do a little a quick recap here of the Super Bowl and, and what it what it kind of reminded me of. Uh, so this this Super Bowl, e- even though it was came down to the wire and went to overtime, it j- it just felt felt kind of lackluster. And what what it really really reminded me of uh, the game was pretty much lackluster and there wasn't much excitement until like the fourth quarter and of course the overtime but what what this game reminded me of a lot while I was watching this game especially the first the first half where uh there was a total uh points uh, scored of just like 13 points and there was no points uh by either team in the in the first quarter but th- this game reminded me kind of of the I guess the 2017-2018 uh Super Bowl between the New England Patriots and uh, and the Los Angeles Rams, and that that's because it just felt like people would have like the the energy uh, around around the game, and it just felt like people would have preferred uh, different teams in the Super Bowl, or at least one different team, you know. Uh, besides, not San Francisco, even though our boy Clint Kubiak was on the team, and sadly wasn't able to get a ring before he came here. Uh, but, you know, maybe people would have preferred to uh, swap out San Francisco for Detroit or e- even Green Bay would have been more exciting. Like the San Francisco 49ers uh, are kind of of the 20s of the 20s have be- kind of come the Buffalo Bills. You know, they make it to the NFC championship game like almost every year and uh, make it to the Super Bowl, but can't can't win. Uh, but so I, I would think some people would have preferred to swap out Detroit. Uh, you know, that was the uh, the country's favorite team, you know, uh, America's team, you know, even though people like to say it's the Dallas Cowboys. But, uh, yeah, I think people would have enjoyed that more. And then on the AFC side, just, just because of the love for Lamar Jackson and the fact that he was the MVP, I think people would have preferred the Ravens even over the Kansas City Chiefs just because – Kansas City Chiefs have just kind of become the uh, become the the new uh, age uh, New England Patriots with their dynasty and uh, all they do is win and that just that just gets t- tiresome you know it gets boring after a while uh, so I, I can understand that uh, and uh, when when the the see and looking at the MVP of the, the Super Bowl it went to uh, Patrick Mahomes who was 34 for 47 for 333 yards with two touchdowns and one interception with a 99.3 quarterback rating. It didn't seem really uh, like he was like he threw for that much in this game. He also rushed for 66 yards, nine rushes for 66 yards, uh, which that didn't really seem like he rushed for that many yards in the game either. Uh, But you look at these stats and, kind of look at the stats from other players on the team. He, he put the, he put the team on his back. So I can't argue with Patrick Mahomes being the MVP, but therefore for a while, I was thinking it was uh, going to be the 49ers that were going to win. It'd be interesting if they, 
you know, they've done it before where they give the MVP to the player on the losing team. And there, there was a couple candidates on, on the 49ers I could have seen uh, uh, winning this uh, award. I uh, wouldn't have given it to Brock Purdy even if they won because his numbers just weren't impressive. And there was just a lot of him scrambling out of the pocket and throwing across his body and just didn't look as composed as he has uh, in the regular season or in previous uh, playoff games. And I was really surprised he didn't throw an interception uh, because of the way he was throwing passes uh, back across his body. Uh, but some candidates that I could have seen uh, win this uh, award would have been uh, Dewan Jennings, who had a passing touchdown, had one attempt, one completion for 21 yards and a touchdown, which that gave him a perfect quarterback rating, 158.3. And then he also he also had four catches for 42 yards with a long of 23 and had another touchdown, and that was off of five targets. So if the 49ers would have won, I could have seen Jawan Jennings kind of a an unheralded uh, player uh, winning it, which that, that would have kind of been nice over uh, Patrick Mahomes winning and winning it, but then a heralded player that probably more likely would have won the award uh, if if the 49ers would have won would have been probably Josh, uh, Christian McCaffrey, who had 22 yards for uh, tw- 22 rushes for 80 yards, which is just a 3.6 average with a long of 11 yards, and he did fumble, so that may, that may have been uh, what kept him from winning it because he lost a fumble, uh, so I could have maybe seen Juwan Jennings winning it over him because of that even though if they won the game, I guess it really wouldn't have mattered all that much. Uh, but then he had eight catches for 80, 80 yards, 24-yard uh, long, one touchdown off of eight targets. So he caught all of his targets. So those, those are probably the two players I could have seen uh, win it, uh, uh, win the MVP uh, if the San Francisco 49ers could have held on to win or could have, uh, won the Super Bowl. They just needed to do more than what they did, which was to score uh, three points on their first possession of overtime. But so mentioning overtime, uh, I knew there was a new rule with uh, o- overtime where they were going to, where they changed it after the, the Buffalo Bills game. I guess that was two or three seasons ago where it's not sudden death. Like it's, if you score a touch, touchdown, like it's sudden death for whoever scores it. A touchdown first, but they changed the rule because even if you go back, even uh, 2009, you, you could win. The game was just sudden death uh, right out of the gate. So whoever won the coin toss first could go down and just kick a field goal and win. So they changed it after the, the Saints win over the Vikings in the NFC Championship game that you can only win on the first possession with a touchdown. But now they changed it again, which I, I understood this. I understood that they had changed it uh, to where each team gets to possess the ball, at least, even if the first team does score a touchdown. But it the the possession, uh, like there's uh, there was a clock going uh, for 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 the possession of the 49ers at first, which what, what was it like ten minutes, and then as it as I think the Chiefs kind of got the ball back with with like what like five seven minutes left or something like that and uh they like pretty much used all their clock uh when they were going down uh to score when they were in the red zone and uh I, they were just letting all the clock continue to run off and i actually thought it was going to go to double overtime kind of like what uh adam schefter had posted in a pa- parody post um earlier in the week about how the nfl jokingly had informed him that the that the Super Bowl is going to be a, a double overtime, but it, it, but I guess it didn't matter if they uh, scored there or not, or if the time ran off or not, because the, the each team gets a chance to possess it. So it would have just rolled over to another clock, and I guess the the, the two teams would have switched uh, field position, uh, what end of the fields they were on, and then they would just have what ten a, a reset of the clock, like it was. Uh, the, the first bit of the overtime, like in, in quarters, I guess. Uh, so, yeah, that, that was weird. And uh, it's ki- kind of funny that the San Francisco 49ers kind of joking, uh, jokingly saying that they didn't understand that rule. And even during the game, uh, Tony Romo was had to explain it to people for the first time because I, I was 
and probably a lot of people screaming out there and definitely Chiefs fans screaming out there like, why aren't they taking a timeout? But it didn't matter even if the rule was like that or, or not or if it wasn't a, a, the other way around. The only way reason why I could see that maybe uh, benefiting the second team uh, is, is because they don't have to rush. You know, they don't have to worry about uh, time running out and them losing because of that because they, they, they got their possession so they get to use it. And I guess the 49ers and Shanahan, maybe they didn't know that rule and know that maybe it is better to uh, defer there now with the new rule because you, you get an extra down with a fourth down and you know exactly what you have to do. But yeah, I, I think I think a lot of people, if nothing else, learn something there uh, during the Super Bowl. Uh, they, they maybe understand the new overtime rule now. Uh, but just a, kind, kind of a... You know, it was an exciting Super Bowl at the end, you know, the fourth quarter overtime, but it was just lackluster for me. Besides me cheering for the 49, not really cheering for him, but I guess pulling for him because I wanted my guy, uh, Clint Kubiak, uh, to win. But just kind of not not a, a very exciting Super Bowl. Not not for me. Didn't didn't have any teams that I care for. And like I said, seeing the Chiefs and the San Francisco 49ers in the NFC Championship, AFC Championship, Super Bowl every year. This kind of gets old. But anyways, I think that's about all I have for you this evening. So who that? And can I get a check, please?